welcome to the drone factory. It's finally done. <laughs> Wait, when did we start this project? February like 2nd, I think. In case anyone freaks out, these aren't guns put on the wall. These are just pellet guns. Before we started building the studio down here in the basement, we had a filming room upstairs and we had a shared office. You got into FPV drones like in the fall and slowly our filming room filled up with drone stuff and then when i went to film i'd tell chris to get rid of everything and then he put it in our office and his desk was just like piled with drone shit. it was so disorganized i had one big Brutal. giant cardboard box just full of equipment parts tools and we decided chris needs a full dedicated drone workshop so he can get a shit out of my office and out of the filming room so we can make regular videos and he can build his drones separately. And if you guys don't know what FPV drones are, link to a video up here. It's basically just making manual drones out of circuit boards, carbon fiber frames, motors, propellers, all that stuff. And you use goggles to see what the drone's seeing. But anyway, if you're interested in that, link to another video up here. This is the whole purpose of this space, is to give me an area where all my stuff can be organized and out of the rest of the house. The space beforehand, it was basically just a concrete wall. Mm -hmm. And the project started off as just me needing a work surface. We were just gonna put in like a floating desk basically, or a floating countertop. And then we we're like, well, we sort of need a place to store all my crap. Well, let's put in cabinets. So then it, it, cabinets got added on. And it's like, well, you need a place to hang your tools. So then well, let's add a pegboard. And before you knew it, this whole project- It just spiraled. You I said, you were like, I, you, you can put up RGB LEDs as sort of like an accent strip somewhere. That's I was all like, it takes. wait a second, where can I put them? Well, let's put them behind the pegboard. And now this is what happened. And then I was like, okay, well, we're just gonna get Ikea cabinets and make it easy. We'll put them together in like an afternoon. They're It'll... cheap, they're fast, they look great. Right, they're out of stock. Finally, we figured that out. And we were so frustrated. We we're like, you know what? This, we're just gonna build the cabinets ourselves from scratch. Oh, you said on our YouTube channel. Out of spite. <laughs> we built custom cabinets that look just like the Ikea cabinets that we were gonna buy. I think they look better. Well, the custom waterfall edge top looks really good too. They look way better. And it went from bare bones kind of place to put drone stuff to a fully finished room with custom cabinets, a custom waterfall edge countertop, this custom pegboard that we built. The oversized pegboard. The oversized giant Jesus ass pegboard, I believe is what we were calling it. This is what the room looked like before. It was pretty bare bones bones, we had concrete floor, concrete wall, and originally we were gonna keep the concrete wall, but then ultimately decided that we need a full wall for storage, so we made the custom oversized big Jesus ass pegboard with the custom cabinets. And the floor before was pretty rough, it was pretty gross looking, I actually scrubbed a bunch of like weird orange shit off the floor, which was kind of nasty. Did that a few times, but it was pretty rough. I think the rest of the basement had, must have been trialed, but this space wasn't, so we went with a coin grip rubber floor in the space, and that's flooring that you usually put into a garage but we thought it'd be pretty easy to be able to sweep up and clean up. The coin grip floor looks pretty cool, but something we've noticed so far is that it's a pain in the ass to clean. So when we started in this space, all that's there really was just a concrete wall and some studs that only went partially down the wall. We didn't want to put up walls, didn't want to have to do anything like that, didn't want to have to move electrical. So we were kind of make, trying to make do with what we had there. It was like a retrofit. Yeah, it was like a wretch. Yeah, exactly. So we figured if we put it in this pegboard, we can use the studs that are already attached to the wall as well as the electrical outlets didn't have to move any electrical. So that was a bonus there. And then it allowed us to put in the cabinets and countertop right underneath the studs. So it actually all kind of worked out. While we're on the topic of cabinets, as you can see, we kind of have like high, like a higher portion of the workspace and a lower portion. So we wanted bar height cabinets so that Chris could stand and work at the 3D printer and stuff, but then also had the option of sitting to a desk height area, and that's why we did that waterfall drop down counter. So it kind of looks nice, but provides two different work areas. It's like a desk area and then a standing work area. I find more comfortable to work at anyway, because at a countertop height, I'm still kind of bending over, especially if you're doing small, intricate things like you do with drones. And that's another reason why we got this Husky table that floats in the middle of the room. It's adjustable height, so Chris can move it up and down depending on what he's working on. But also it's on wheels, so we can move it around the room, which is super key. So it's just kind of a versatile piece. It's a little smaller, but we wanted it to be a little bit smaller, so it wasn't taking up a massive amount of space in the room. So the countertop we made from butcher block, and we like that because it was basically just a raw slab of wood. We could make our cuts, create the waterfall edge. I opted to leave the work surface, the countertop, unfinished. So we could have used various oils like you used to finish a butcher block countertop if you're gonna use it for food. It's a work surface, it's gonna get banged up, and I don't want to finish it and make it all look nice, and then I'd be afraid to use it. So it's made to be used, it's 
going to naturally patina, it's gonna get worn out, but that's fine. And I was kind of actually inspired by a sushi restaurant in New York City we went to years ago that had a white ash, basically bar height table. And after every evening, he would just sand it and it would be like a new work surface. And I've already sanded blemishes out of it, you know, like pencil lines from all the cuts we were doing. So I just sanded all those off. You wanna see how we made that? I'll link it up here. Okay, uh -huh. I keep thinking like I'm trying to sit up straight. And no, I, I'm trying all to I can do think it. of is like, sit up straight, you banana shape. Where was that from? <laughs> it was on Facebook. <laughs> I didn't see that. You banana straight shape. Straight, you banana shape. <laughs> if you open up the cabinet doors, we've got it pretty organized. We've got bins for things that are all labeled. Some are bigger, some are smaller. And then we have these small little drawers that all have labels. Chris's drone stuff, like it's so tiny. So I ordered these little things from the container store. Uh, other than that, it's pretty standard cabinets. Soft closed hinges, matte black finish. We got hardware actually for the doors from Ikea, mm -hmm. which afterwards Becky was like, oh, it makes the doors look just like you got them made or bought them from Ikea, which kind of pisses me off because well, I spent sorry. so much time <laughs> creating them. Pegboard is made out of OSB, uh, painted black. We sort of took the motif from the rest of the basement. The they hallway. haven't seen it yet. Okay, so coming into the basement area, the unfinished or the studio part, we lined the unfinished walls with OSB that was painted black. So we kind of extended that style onto the pegboard. It kind of gives the studio and the drone factory a cohesive feel. We opted to do oversized big holes, large, large holes, a large pegboard. Big. Jesus novelty, ass. Novelty size pegboard. Big Jesus ass yeah. oversized pegboard. And the reason we did that was twofold. One, it was a lot easier because I could drill less holes. And two, it kind of had a cool feel to it. It was a little bit something a bit more novel than a standard pegboard. So it also allowed us to actually make shelving units from the oversized pegs, which is pretty cool. I basically cut uh, a couple one foot shelves, a uh, two foot shelf and a three foot shelf, and then put some different mounting options on the back uh, using the drill press. And then I could basically just stick big pegs in the back and, and slide them into the pegboard. They're pretty sturdy considering yeah. it's just dry fit in. They're not glued in or anything. It's just all friction fit. Really tight and it kind of makes the wall configurable. So you can change it up. If we like the way the layout looks now, but maybe in a couple months, if you wanted to take down your guns, we could replace those. They're not guns, they're pellet. They're Take down your pellet machines. They're pellet, they're pellet guns. Take down. I said guns. We can replace them with the shelves or anything really. Pre-charged pre pneumatic lawn. Stop. We knew we were gonna put drones on the pegboard. We had no idea what else we were gonna put on the pegboard. Originally in this space, there's like three ceiling fixtures. Let's be honest. Just the, the bowl, bare bulbs. It's not great. Here's the thing, when you're designing a space, lighting is as important as all of the decor that you put in that space. It's as important as lighting is for video. It's just a little bit different. So the way we light our shots for video. I mean, realistically, this is like a set. Too. Yeah, it is. But you should also be thinking about lighting your spaces for different moods and different functions. So obviously three ceiling lights was not enough. This is what it looks like just with the ceiling lights on. And it looks really dingy. It looks like a basement. Uh, this is what it looks like with just the pegboard backlights on. So you can see it's really moody. You can change that to a color maybe. With the ceiling lights, you can also change that to a color. And that's kind of like this sort of moody setup that I can use if I'm say down here with my laptop gaming, for example, at the desk area. But that's with the work lights turned off. Now we have these large LED shop lights that put out a ton of light. Amazing for task light. They light up the work surface great. My only regret is that they're not dimmable. You're basically locked in to that intensity light, which is mirroring the same intensity as this Aperture 120D. I'd love to be able to dim this and make this a bit more moody, but unfortunately we can't without ripping the lights apart and putting in a new driver for the LEDs with pulse wave modular. Anyway. And then the LEDs behind the pegboard are just, they're not for anything else other than our own pleasure for our own eyeballs. They look cool. They look cool, yeah. The B-roll from the beginning of this video was me doing drone stuff at this. Uh, drone stuff. <laughs> making drones in the drone factory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was of me at this Husky movable work surface, but I'm probably gonna be more so using the desk area, but what I wanted to do is show me using this surface with the drone factory uh, in the background. Yeah, so this is kind of doubling as a set for us as well. So it's just another place where we can film our videos. And so now we kind of have like three different sets. The other two you guys haven't seen yet because we're not finished the studio, but I can't wait to show you guys because it's coming together, I think. We shopped our house for some art. We stole a pennant from my office, the go away pennant, which is my favorite, one of my favorite little art thingies. I think the skull 
design on it is, is very fitting for the drone factory. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I have the Buffalo New York pegboard art piece from Snack Paintings, our friend Ashley Smallwood. She made this custom piece for us and shipped it down, so we thought it was really fitting down here. The studio and the drone factory kind of have this like industrial modern feel, whereas the rest of the house is a little more Scandinavian, a little like more adulty. so I felt like it fit really well in the space. And it was a nice tall vertical piece, and we have this like big white wall here, so. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what to put space. on it. So also, I, it's made on a pegboard, so it's kind of appropriate. It's like a smaller size pegboard. Pegboards on pegboards on pegboards. Smaller holes. One of the other uses for the pegboard itself, we made a custom tool rack, would you call it? Basically, it's just a piece yeah. of, of wood with holes cut in it. Use the drill press, press fit the dowels into the back of it, and then push that into the pegboard itself, and it's removable. Put it basically in the middle of the sitting work area. Also, some of those tools were red. Yeah. I really, what is with people on red. <laughs> so I spray painted some of them to match the aesthetic of this space. Printers there. Yep, 3D printers there. That was originally, like, besides like you taking over all the spaces with all your drone shit, this is what happened. Then the 3D printer came into our lives. Oh yeah. Which was on. <laughs> this is all like small little pieces that kept getting added on. And like, you were just like, do 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 do, set his 3D printer to go, went off to work, and I'd come in to like, edit these videos or beep, like, beep, 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 I'd be trying to do audio and it's like beep, 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 beep. Or if I was trying to record a video in the next room, you could hear it. So I was like, listen, this has to go. So that was the first thing to come down here. And then we kind of built the cabinets around the 3D printer. Yeah, so it's really just a big workshop. It is a big workshop. This yeah. could literally be used as anybody's leather making, sewing, working in the woodworking work. It's like a craft room. Okay, so that is the Drone Factory. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos. We'll see you on the next one. The helicopter video might be a Drone Factory video. Might be something else. Maybe me shooting my non-guns. I gotta go to the bathroom. Bye. Bye. Some people said I need, a, I need a man cave. I kind of have an aversion to that word only because whenever I think of man cave, I think of sports, beer, Lazy boy furniture. Lazy boy furniture. If you're into that, that's cool, but we're just gonna call it the drone factory. Stop! Uh, <laughs> do you wanna talk about why there's guns in the background? While I sip on my tea? Sure, well, there aren't guns in the background. What are they? Those are my pellet guns. I don't have any guns. There's not real guns put Listen, on Listen, first it starts with paintball, <laughs> then come the pellet guns, then come the ones that shoot real bullets. Look, I've played paintball since